Hi everyone, and welcome back. Over the last couple of lessons, we've been building toward one of the biggest results from this part of the course, Taylor's inequality. This result allows us to determine how accurately our Taylor polynomials approximate a given function f of x. Well, we finally managed to prove Taylor's inequality in the last lesson, so now it's our job to see how it can be used in some example problems. For today's problem, consider the function f of x equals cos x. I'd like to begin by using p60, the 6th degree Maclaurin polynomial for this function, to approximate cosine of 2. Next, I'd like to find an upper bound on the error of this approximation using Taylor's inequality. Finally, maybe it's the case that the approximation from part A is just not quite good enough. Maybe I want to approximate cos of 2 to at least four correct decimal places. The question is, which of our nth order Maclaurin polynomials will achieve this level of accuracy? Okay, so the first part of this problem would be to find the 6th degree Maclaurin polynomial for the function f of x equals cos x. We're then going to use that polynomial to estimate cos of 2. Now to find this polynomial, you can use the definition. You can find the first six derivatives of cos x, plug in 0 to each of them, multiply those by powers of x, and divide by n factorial. Fortunately, however, we've already found this polynomial for cos x in a previous example video. Remember, this polynomial was given by p60 equals 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial. Remembering the Maclaurin polynomials for cos x is actually very easy because they follow a very strict pattern. Notice that we get all even powers of x divided by the even factorials, and our signs are alternating. This pattern is going to continue for the higher order Maclaurin polynomials as well. You can remember this pattern as long as you keep in mind that cosine of x is an even function. Perhaps it's not surprising that all the odd powers of x disappear. Try to show that this is the case. At any rate, now that we have this polynomial, we'd like to use it to estimate cos of 2 we find that cos of 2 should be approximately equal to this Taylor polynomial, p60 of 2, which is 1 minus 2 squared over 2 plus 2 to the 4 over 4 factorial minus 2 to the 6 over 6 factorial. This gives me 1 minus 4 over 2 plus 16 over 24 minus 64 over 720. Now if you simplify this expression, what you should be left with is minus 19 over 45, which is approximately minus 0.422. So there you have it. We've obtained an approximation for cosine of 2 using this 6 degree Maclaurin polynomial for cos x. The question now becomes how accurate is this approximation? How close is minus 19 over 45 to the true value of cosine of 2? To answer this question, we'll use Taylor's inequality. What does Taylor's inequality say about the size of the error in our approximation? Well, remember, it tells you that if you're trying to approximate a function f at a point x using the nth order Taylor polynomial centered at x0, then the size of the error term is no more than k, some constant, times the absolute value of x minus x0 to the n plus 1, divided by n plus 1 factorial. What's this constant k all about? Remember, k is some upper bound for the absolute value of your n plus first derivative. And that upper bound should work for all inputs z between the point where you've centered your polynomials and the point where you're trying to make the approximation. So if you're using a Maclaurin polynomial centered at 0 and you're trying to approximate your function at x equals 10, then this upper bound k should work for all values of z between 0 and 10. Now you do have a bit of flexibility with how you pick k. k doesn't have to be the exact maximum value of f to the n plus 1. It just has to be an upper bound. So if you find some k that works, anything bigger than that k will also work. Of course, if you pick a really big k value, then this upper bound will be pretty big as well and therefore you get a less sharp approximation on your error term. So usually the goal is to pick k to be as small as possible. It's also worth pointing out that this absolute value of x minus x naught really measures the distance between x, the point of approximation, and x naught, the center of your polynomial. 
If you're trying to approximate at a point very far away from your center, this upper bound will tend to be pretty big. And as a result, you might have a pretty big error term. Okay, back to our example. We are trying to estimate the size of the error term, R62, that you get by approximating cosine of 2 using the 6th degree Maclaurin polynomial. According to Taylor's inequality, the size of the error term is no more than k, a constant that we'll determine momentarily, times the absolute value of 2 minus 0 to the n plus 1, that's an exponent of 7, divided by 7 factorial. To figure out k, we're supposed to look at the n plus first derivative of our function f. Since f of x is equal to cos x, its first derivative is going to be minus sine x, its second derivative is going to be minus cos x, and so on. They repeat in this very predictable way. It's not too hard to check, and I'll let you convince yourself that it's true. The seventh derivative of this function is equal to sine x. So the question is, what's an upper bound for sine x in absolute value for x values between 0 and 2? Well, the situation for sine x is pretty simple, right? Sine x is always bounded between minus 1 and 1. So in absolute value, it's always less than or equal to 1. This is what we're going to take to be our k value. In this case, k is not only an upper bound, but it's the smallest upper bound that you can find. It really is the maximum of our n plus first derivative. Using this expression in our inequality above, we see that the error term is bounded by 1 times 2 to the 7 over 7 factorial, which simplifies to 8 over 315. Since our approximation for cosine of 2 was found to be minus 19 over 45, this error estimate is telling us that cos of 2 is somewhere between minus 19 over 45 minus 8 over 315 and minus 19 over 45 plus 8 over 315. If you punch these values into a calculator, you'll find that cosine of 2 is somewhere between minus 0.448 and minus 0 0.396. Now at this point, I'm gonna make a quick note about rounding. I always like to work with exact values, fractions, but if you do need to use a decimal, you'll need to make sure to round your lower bounds down and your upper bounds up. Otherwise, you'll cut out part of your interval and you may lose the true value of cos two. So even though our upper bound is roughly minus 0 0.396825, to three decimal places, we have to round to the larger value, minus 0 0.396. The same is true for the error bound. In decimal form, 8 over 315 is approximately 0 0.02539. If we want to round to, say, three decimal places, we'd have to round up. We can make the error bound larger, but not smaller. In this case, we'd have to round to 0 0.026. Of course, this isn't a big issue if you always work with fractions. Okay, now back to our problem. This approximation that we found is okay, but maybe it's not quite good enough. The next question we're gonna ask is, what degree do we have to get up to to ensure that our approximation is correct to at least four decimal places? We'd now like to determine which of our Maclaurin polynomials, Pn0, will correctly approximate cos of 2 to at least four decimal places. Said a little differently, we want the size of the error in our approximation to be less than 10 to the minus 4. Well, I don't know the exact value of the error in my approximation, but I could probably find an upper bound for this term using Taylor's inequality. If I could then identify which n values make that upper bound less than 10 to the minus 4, well, those n's would certainly make my error less than 10 to the minus 4. So this is the strategy that I'm going to use. According to Taylor, if we want to approximate cosine of 2 using our order n Maclaurin polynomial, the remainder, absolute value of rn2, is less than or equal to k times the absolute value of 2 minus 0 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. Just like on the previous slide, this constant k represents an upper bound for the absolute value of our n plus first derivative over all inputs between 0 and 2. But how am I supposed to compute that n plus first derivative if I don't know n? Well, in this case, it's actually very easy. Our function is f of x equals cos x, right? That means its derivatives are given by sine x, cos x, minus sine x, and minus cos x. 
In all cases, those derivatives are bounded above by 1 in absolute value. So it doesn't matter what derivative I'm computing here. I can take k to be equal to 1. Plugging this in, I find that my error is less than or equal to 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, now that we have an expression for the upper bound on our error term, we have to ask the question, when is this expression less than 10 to the minus 4? For which values of n does this inequality hold? Well, the bad news here, folks, is that this factorial term is going to make this inequality pretty difficult to solve algebraically. So instead of using algebra, we're going to use trial and error. We'll plug in larger and larger values for n until this expression on the left is less than 10 to the minus 4. Notice that we actually already know that this won't work when n is equal to 6. On the previous slide, we saw that the error in our approximation when we use a 6th degree Maclaurin polynomial is a fair bit bigger than 10 to the minus 4. So why don't we start here and see what happens after n equals 6. When n equals 7, our error is bounded above by 2 to the 8 over 8 factorial, which is approximately 0 0.00635. Okay, it's bigger than 10 to the minus 4, so we have to check the next value of n. When n is 8, our error is bounded above by 2 to the 9 over 9 factorial, which is approximately 0 0.00142. Again, too large. When n is 9, our error is bounded above by 2 to the 10 over 10 factorial, which is approximately 0 0.00029. Okay, the bound on our error is getting smaller, but it's still too big. We're going to check n equals 10. When n is 10, our error is bounded by 2 to the 11 over 11 factorial, which is approximately, rounding up, 0 0.00006. And sure enough, this is less than 10 to the minus 4. Thus, as long as our n value is bigger than or equal to 10, we are guaranteed to have an approximation that's correct to at least four decimal places.